And now back to your regularly scheduled reviews. We are done with the marathon weeks, and we are back to reviewing just whatever random thing showed up in the mail this week. And this time, it is the DX Power Dizer. Transformer fans would actually refer to this guy as ultra-sized. He is very tall, very thick, very heavy. And a far better shade of yellow than Bumblebee is. Actually closer to a safety orange color. So that works very well with his heavy machine nature, as do the caution stripes on his shoulders. Let's take a closer look at the detailings. First off, we have the head in a lot of white paint with some blue windshields on there. He does look quite cool. It passes for a face, and it does have a vague rocket ship uh, scheme to him. If I put him upside down, you can kind of see Forze's head in him just a little bit. Yep, looks like a space shuttle. You can also see a lot of nice machine details, a lot of exhaust there in the middle, done up in a kind of a dark shade of silver, really. A little bit darker. I don't know, it's not gunmetal gray. A lot of little designs. I quite like that. And actually, you can see the speaker box in there, too. But the grooves actually kind of integrate themselves into all that machine detail. Over to the shoulders, a little bit more white, a little bit more silver painted on. Giving him more of those machine details that I like so much. His joints have been painted, a little bit of silver there on the side. You also see a little bit of black in the elbow. And a little bit more of the dark gray here on the top of the wrist. The hand, you can obviously tell, is going to form a tire at some point. But for now, fully molded, thumb and everything, four fingers, very nice. A little bit more paint just to break up the yellow there in the middle. Uh, dark gray for the legs and the feet made of wheels. At least they're flat. It's more than I can say for some of the toys I reviewed that had wheels for feet. All in all, a lot of nice details on him. He looks like a big solid robot. So, how about articulation? Since this is a toy robot, he should have some. Well, oh, it's not his main function, so he has enough to get by. The shoulders move outward. They are rat Everything on this guy is ratcheted, by the way. And pretty much everything ratcheted in 45 degree increments. So, while he does have posing possibilities, they do like to limit themselves a little bit. He does have a bicep rotation, so if you want his thumbs outward and remove that barbell curling effect, you can do that as well. Also, he does have hips. They do move outward and back. That part's fine, but they don't move uh, laterally, unfortunately. They do have a slight tilt to them, though. So even though he doesn't have an ankle tilt per se, uh, he does still stand a little bit more naturally than he would otherwise. No knee, unfortunately. So, yeah, the legs are pretty much static. So very simple articulation. But then again, like I said, it's not his main function. It's enough to get him by, though. That's all I really ask for. I guess we can hear what sound effects he makes. Yep, DX toy, sound effects. The on switch, located behind his left shoulder. Let me turn that on for you. It's just his activation noise. You can tell we are in for some interesting sound effects for our ears. Let's see. Let's hear, rather. That's him running. Let me hit the button on the head again. And that's him throwing a haymaker punch, it sounds like. I actually really liked it. They had enough attention to put in that little build-up and momentum. You can hear him getting faster and stomping louder. That's actually kind of a neat effect. Now, if we hit it again, he's going to go into a different sequence. He's flexing some hydraulics here, but I can't quite tell why. Let me hit the button again. Not quite sure what he was doing. Sounded like he was picking something up. Might have been pushing something. Little hard to tell. Hmm. 
Now, if I hit the button again, he will actually go into a completely different set of sounds. They're actually ones meant for his vehicle mode. See, the toy can't tell which mode it is in until we get to tower mode later on. But for now, we should turn him into vehicle mode, just so we can actually get those sound effects done correctly. It's a very simple transformation, and in a weird way, uh, so simple that as a Transformer fan, it actually throws me off, and I kind of forget how it's done every now and then. What I do always remember is that it starts by giving him bunny ears. I don't know why. It's just weird that way. Okay, it doesn't really start that way, but that's what I like to do first because it makes me laugh. It's pretty simple transformation, just folding everything back. The only thing you really have to do is make sure that these peg into the little clips inside the, all that machine detail. Little clip inside there, and come on, click. There we go. Now, hang on, fold this back, and move these little things out. We'll get to the, whatever those are in a minute. And that's pretty much it. That is your vehicle mode. Actually, let me resync. There, that's your vehicle mode. You can see, that's, that's pretty much what it looks like in the show. I mean, it is just pretty much him just kind of folded up and rolling around on his hands and feet. So, I guess I really can't complain. That's pretty much what it's supposed to do. Really doesn't expose any new details other than some silver on his back and whatever that thing is. Again, it's something we'll get to later. However, now, as long as we're in this mode, we need to hear some more sound effects. So let's hit the button again. Sounds of him driving around. That's enough driving. Hit it again. It's not a very smooth stop power dizer. I think you need a checkup. Now there's a little bit more this can do from here, but I'm going to need a Forza module changed figure to get it done. Hang on, let me go get him. And no, I'm not getting him from the tub. I'm actually getting him from... Oh boy. This is going to be hazardous. This is me playing dominoes, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a minute. Be carefully, don't knock anything over. There we go. And one jump cut later, to avoid me looking like an idiot trying to get him to sit down on this, we have Forza riding Power Dizer's vehicle mode. You can see they have included handles for him to hang on to while he is in this form, and those bunny ears were actually spots for his feet to go. And I suppose this is supposed to act like the back of a chair or something, I don't know. What I do know is, this is ridiculously out of proportion. The Power Dizer is far, far bigger than this. It's really just so far as they can interact with the vehicle mode. It does give him more play options, no matter how inaccurate to the show it is. So, I can hardly complain about getting an extra feature out of this toy. Speaking of, there's one more major feature to go. We need one more mode out of this toy. To start transforming for tower mode, the handles have to go back down, and the bunny ears have to fold away. I'm sorry, bunny ear fans. No longer. Here, let me get the legs out of the way first. These have to unsnap. They fold up all the way down like that. It's actually easier for me to remember how to get them into this mode, oddly enough, even though, oddly enough, because it is more complex. It's just the Transformer fan in me. Now, with those securely out of the way, we can line these up. Start with that. And, wait, hang on, get back here. There we go. Back over on the other side. Fold the whole thing up. And you get a sound effect to confirm he is tower mode. And now he's going to get really freaking tall again. Let's see how I'm going to fit this thing in. Oh, oh, it's getting worse. Oh my god. Jeez. Okay, yeah, that's a really tall mode. It's not exactly how we need to have him, though. We need him in the standby position. So, 
Let me fold this down. Down. So now we've got him in standby mode, but standing by for what? Let's hit the button again. Machine? You are a machine! What What other machine you... Oh, right. Yeah, there is one other thing we have to get to. And that thing is Machine Masingler. Or however you pronounce it. This series is really confusing my phonetics. As you can see, I've already taken the liberty of putting Module Change 4 Zay on board, so... Well, so it won't fall over so easily. But... Even with him sitting there, you can see there is a ton of detail in here, and it's a very nice representation of Forze's dirt bike. There are some simplifications going on here. For instance, the spokes are solid wheels, just to give it some actual structure and stability. You can also see, if I raise his leg like a dog, uh, his engine has been painted one solid, uh, one solid spray of silver. A little bit unpainted, but otherwise... Uh, just one big paint blotch and going through here in the chain section too. So I'm, I'm sure on a figure art style release all of this will be individually painted, it'll be fully detailed, but for the budget conscious this still looks okay. I mean the main part of it, the actual space shuttle inspired design and body shell all look fine. You can see here on the front the windshield or whatever you would call that, it's too low to really block anything. Painted up in a dark maroon color. It's a little sloppy on mine, but that's the kind of thing that varies from toy to toy. Yours may have it, or it may not. So, I really don't try and judge the toy by that. You can also see some black lines here on the tail fins, giving it that look of a space shuttle all the way to the back. And considering that, you also have the booster engine. Everything pretty much well represented from the show. And I actually... Yes, it's a very gimmicky bike, but I've kind of gotten used to it. It just matches Forze very well. It's a very good companion piece for it. And he is a common rider. What's a common rider without something to ride? Let's give Masingler something to ride. Hang on. Alright, here we go. Forze riding up, mounting right here. We have holders that you can fold up. They clip into the front wheel. And now, securely setting him up, so we can raise tower mode once again. All the way back. Let's see if Forza will actually hang on. Ah, very nice. Now, Masingler also plugs into a peg down here to secure it even further. Now, all locked in, ready for takeoff. Now, we've got one more sound effect to hear. Let me hit that head one more time. Are you ready, Forza? Oh, she's face forward before takeoff. Eh, you're not embarrassing me. Let's go. That little chime at the end there should be familiar to anyone who's ever seen Team Rocket blasting off. I absolutely love that they included that. It's so anime. I, I have to love it. It honestly probably is my favorite feature on this toy. It's so unnecessary and so doesn't fit, but you know what? It is just fun to hear. And while Forze didn't take off, you can see he managed to survive intact. Everything is staying in place. He's got a firm grip, and so does tower mode. It locks in there very securely. So all around... Very cool. It, this alone, right here, makes an interesting display piece, to say the least. Now let's be honest here, the big accessory robot of the year isn't going to be for everyone. But for everyone who does dig the Power Dizer in the show, I really think this toy is going to do a lot for you. It's got a lot of really good features, a lot of interplayability with the Module Change series toys, and all the sound effects from the show that you would expect are there, with a couple of interesting ones thrown on top. And I think it was a great move packing in Masingler with this. The bikes are usually really expensive and don't do a whole lot for the price. But packed in with a giant freaking robot? Brilliant. This should satisfy anybody one way or another. Mine, of course, came from Hobby Link Japan. Where else? And if you've been buying up the Module Change series figures thanks to these videos, this is a great companion piece. Hmm, now how do I end this video? Oh, I know.
Okay. I'm happy now.